All right, I'm going to tell you how I made a welding oven. Um, my name is Brian, and this is really what you're looking at. Let me put a pointer. This is my welding oven. Inside here I have 7018 welding rods. And those of you that have used 7018 welding rods know they should not be exposed to moisture. So I'm going to keep them heated. But let me take you uh, along for the story here. I do some welding art. So I was building a new project, and I ended up getting some 5 8 inch plate, a couple pieces of this. I'm going to chop it up. I'm going to make a cube-like structure. It's just something I'm working on. Here's what it looks like. Now, you might be able to see at the bottom, there's serious imperfections along here and along here. I was using this Lotus LPT 5000D. It's off of Amazon. It's a plasma cutter. It says that it can handle half inch. This is 5 8 It can't really handle 5 8 so it made a terrible cut. Maybe it wasn't my skill, uh, or my skill was not up to par. Maybe I didn't have enough air pressure, whatever it was. Not very good. Regardless, I ended up making this cube, tacking it together. I'm just using little tacks here. This is my Millermatic 140. It's a 120 volt um, little MIG welder. I crank it all the way up, just enough to get tacks. I can then use my hammer, pound these into place, try and get things as square as possible, despite my imperfections, as you can see down at the bottom here. I also have an old school buzz box from the 80s. And I also have some 6011 that work with this AC buzz box. I bought these about seven years ago, and I thought, well, how bad can they be? I mean, most rods, you can leave them out, and they're okay, as long as they're not 7018, or so I thought. I was wrong. Hey, by the way, uh, I, I think I took apart this Grassman one time, and inside, the guts actually said that they were Lincoln, so that was kind of interesting. Here's what the rods look like up close. You can't even see the 6011 on them. There's like a 6, a 0, a 1, 1. I thought, well, I'll try them out regardless. So I start laying some beads down on my block, and um, of course 6011s are going to dig in deep, uh, and they're not going to be buttery like uh, you might think a 6013 or something like that. But these are really rough, and I ended up going up and down uh, rod sizes. I ended up changing the uh, number of amps, but it was really not coming along very well. As you can see, I was getting porosity here. Uh, and it was really embarrassing, I have to say. So I ended up grinding out some of this. And, um, you know, this whole block was just a big project. And I also wanted to practice some uphills. I wanted to practice a bunch of different settings on this uh, thick metal. So um, I was making two projects into one. I also tried my AHP, my Alpha TIG 201. I could put it up on AC. I could change the frequency and modulate a whole bunch of other things. But I'm telling you, those rods, um, those 6011s were not working with me whatsoever. I even tried them on DC. Uh, it's just they, they, they would start burning up. I mean, it was terrible. So, um, well, thankfully, Amazon had a 50% off sale. It was like Amazon days. And these Victory 7018 uh, popped up on my screen for half price, and I thought, well, I'll give them a go. Normally, I never use 7018s because as soon as you open them, you know, you're, you're supposed to keep them in a heater, and I didn't have a heater at the time. So I bought these, and they arrived in this beautiful package, sealed, and within there, uh, that package, they were vacuum sealed. So I have my welding rods here, 10 pounds. I didn't put these letters on here, this 10 pounds. I mean, that's what it looks like in the package, in the vacuum. Really nicely done. Um, so before I open them, I want to finish up this uh, oven. So I started it by um, thinking about how much heat I would need. And uh, on the back side of the Victory, it just said for redrying 662 Fahrenheit for a half hour. There's all kinds of variation. I ended up downloading uh, Hobart um, for their 7018, and they said, look, if you're just going to store these, store them from like 220 to 350. In Celsius, it'd be 104. That's got to be a typo. I bet you that's 176. 
I do a lot. I'm like a science guy, so um, I would say that's going to be 176 degrees Celsius. I think that's just a typo on their end, but you know. And and the beauty of the 7018 is you get that 70,000 psi tensile strength and uh, yield of like what 60 something like that. Okay. So regardless, I'm going to aim for getting up close to 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Here's how I'm going to do it. Because I know a lot of people have gone back and forth on these forums asking if they need an oven and, you know, should they bother buying one? I, I had stuff laying around, so I just wanted to build one. And uh, what I'm going to use is porcelain. Porcelain doesn't melt. Metal doesn't melt. Wires will melt unless you get the right wires. So this is going to be my heater. Those of you that are from 70s and 80s, they had these Betty Crocker kids' little ovens. Uh, girls would make cookies in them. They just use a light bulb, and it would get up to 350 degrees. So that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to use a light bulb. I think I started with a 40 watt, maybe 60. I don't remember. Regardless, here's how I built it. I ended up getting special wire. This is silicon wire. And, um, you know, it's got copper in it. And it's good for 200 degrees Celsius, which is about 392 Fahrenheit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a plate on here to separate the porcelain, the wire, and so on. So I've got my high temperature wire going right to my porcelain here. Leave a little gap. Snug the wires a little bit. And then I've got my bolts sticking out. And I'm just using uh, these nuts and washers as spacers. What I'm going to do is I'm going to end up putting it into some 6-inch ductwork. This is a cap, and I'm going to end up putting it into the cap, which I'm going to then end up making into a little chamber. So, look, the cap's not really stable at this point, right? So these are going to end up being bolted down. I always put some type of security for the wires here, and so on. Again, using spacers, I want to leave gaps. I don't want wire getting crunched. I want to be able to have a little gap between everything. So this is what it looks like. I've got a gap in between the back of the 6-inch. So uh, this is where the porcelain is essentially residing. And then the wires come through with another metal piece here and leaving another gap. I can choose whatever wattage light bulb I want to use. Here I think it's probably a 60 or a 40. I don't remember. I crimped this one side. It's kind of ugly. I use channel locks. doesn't really matter. I'm going to mate those together. That's going to be my heater. And then I'm just going to use some metal tape. You could see I uh, did a dummy run earlier. And, you know, it starts to crustify the tape a little when you peel it off. This is going to be my 6-inch that's going to eventually go inside the 10-inch. And you'll see the bolts coming back out again with another way to secure the wires. So let me take you to another picture and show you what I mean. This is one of the very first attempts that I made. And this is just... Uh, a testing phase so I was using just uh, household wire 14 gauge it's not rated for the heat just testing this out on my bench here to see how much heat I would get to make sure it was going to be warm enough and it was I'm just using some insulation didn't even bother taking the paper off but you'll notice the six inch will fit into the eight inch give me about you know an inch or two of insulation around so this is where I taped up the six inch I've got my light bulb in here. My rods would be laying in here. Then I slide this other tube with the insulation around it. That's the basic idea. This is another angle of it. One of the many trials I had. At the time, I had a pull switch. I didn't like that. I ended up breaking it anyhow. So I replaced that. The light's not on, clearly. I'm going to take this cap and close up this end. And then I'll slide this other one on and put the other cap around it. You'll see in a second. But I think, and I don't remember, I wrote down the numbers and I I, I forgot what they were, uh, but I think at 40 watt I was, I was getting up to 180 degrees inside um, and 60 was a lot more. I put 100 and that was just too hot. You didn't need it that hot. Um, regardless, this is kind of what it looks like. So this is the back side of the 8 inch Inside here is my 6-inch 
right, going around here and the wire sticking out. And I'm going to tape this up. You could see I had tape from a previous trial. Important part is I got to make sure that um, if something fails, no one gets electrocuted. So I've got a beautiful ground wire here. So out of this, I've got my green wire that's going and really wound around here to this nice piece of copper, which goes to this bolt, which goes to this piece of metal, which goes to that piece of metal, um, to that bolt, and so on. So everything is is going to have a ground on it. This part does not get warm in the least. I mean, probably 75 degrees at most. Uh, so I don't have to worry about uh, having wire that can withstand the heat and then I can just cap that off and you can see I have one bolt there one bolt there tighten everything nicely nothing's moving around I'll put a cap on here and that's essentially what my oven is and of course as I'm testing this and making sure metal everywhere anywhere I ever touch metal if something were to go wrong it's going to end up going to this ground wire and uh, this should read zero 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 if my battery was brand new it's not so it reads like an ohm um, but uh, I've got great continuity everywhere inside outside everything has uh, continuity this is going to be plugged into a GFCI so um, it's not like I have to worry uh, if you know it's, it's going to ground I, I have many amps going through there the circuit is going to trip immediately I think it's five milliamps or something like that so um, all right, now I'm finally going to use my 7018 rods, and oh my, are they just wonderful, like buttery smooth. Look at this. Compare that, and I did this, I used this picture. This is a, an old 6011 uh, that I was using. I think I used some 6010s on DC also, but regardless, 7018, that's the first run. I don't remember which size I was using here because while I did get an eighth, I ended up uh, going up a size or two just to play around. Um, Harbor Freight had a sale also, so I ended up getting some various sizes of 7018 and just practicing. I was practicing going uphill and I'd grind them back out. I wanted to see if I could uh, get some excellent welds, you know, and of course, porosity is always a problem. You got to really be careful and not whip and things of that nature, but um, it was a big practice session. There was a lot of welding. Remember, each one of these planes is five-eighths of an inch across, five-eighths of an inch up, and there's one, two, three, four sides here, another four going down, and then on the bottom. So there was a tremendous amount of welding, um, and that's why I was trying all the various rods, different techniques. It was really a big practice session. In the end, i got to make a big cube here. but So I'm just working around the metal block. Uh, making some look pretty and then I'm grinding them out and so on. Um, I, it's hard to remember if some of these were uphill or what, what they were. But uh, I ended up making uh, a holder for this because it was in my way. So I connected it to my I-beam, just took a couple brackets that I made, just sent them through a metal bender. This is uh, essentially what it looks like. I've got the cap on. This is the back. It's sitting on my wooden bench right here as I'm getting it ready. I've got my light bulb in here, and I've got all my other insulation now, and it's just hanging out here. I was going to cut it off, but I realized I don't need to. Uh, let me show you. I'm going to put a cap on it. There's my light, and this is what it looks like inside. There's my toasty uh, rods, and um, I don't remember what bulb rating that is. I imagine it's 40 or 60. I think that's what I ended up going with, but, you know, these rods are way too hot to touch. Now the beauty is if you were to touch the outside of this thing, it feels maybe, maybe slightly warm that you could say, oh, I think, I think this is warmer than room temperature. And that's about it. I mean, it's like 75 degrees when I use the IR. And then I put this cap on. I just fold this uh, insulation over top of it. And then I had an extra bent piece and I just put that on and then I'm done. And like I said, when I use the infrared thermometer, it only reads 75 degrees out here. And uh, that's what I've been using. And it's been uh, running for, I don't know, a month or two now, three, probably two months, I think, something like that. Um, maybe, well, maybe not that long, whatever. Uh, regardless, it works well. I had a really good time using the 7018, and they are wonderful. 
and if you keep them warm you pull them out and they are ready to go um, you know and I, I recommend getting a big chunk of steel like this and you don't even have to make it this big but I'm telling you you can get a lot of practice welds on here um, now this weld I actually looks a little bit different and I, I don't know if anyone has, has dealt with this so I'm just gonna throw this in here too I've got this really interesting ultra steel and ultra alloy and uh, I'm from Pittsburgh so this is down in Pittsburgh PA uh, it's called ultra ultra alloy on West Carson which is the same place as Jackson welding I think they were the same place at one time regardless um, these rods are 25 years old at least and I'll show you how I know that but here's what I want to show look these are really strong 85,000 and uh, yield strength is 70,000 and these are three sixteenths and these are AC I was running these on AC heck I was using the buzz box for this I'm telling you these are the greatest rods I've ever used in my life uh, um, like I said I was using really high amperage but these were the smoothest probably the greatest rods I've ever used and they've been sitting with me for I don't know since well, I'll show you first of all this is what they look like they have this beautiful blue coating and they were wrapped up they were still exposed to air but they were as crisp as can be I actually had a receipt from around that time that I put in the same box um, 1998 so they've been sitting there for you know a very very for decades and I haven't used them and because uh, they were expensive and actually I think one of the guys there gave them to me and told me to try them and this is from my father's work one of the welders there these are 6013 um, 3 16 and he gave me these around the same time so these are old too 6013 we all know they can last a long time um, but I, I just couldn't believe uh, these ultra steel just wonderful uh, and you, you the other thing I wanted you to notice about them is they're like 18 inches versus 14 inches I've never seen them again um, and I've had them and they are just uh, they they make 6013s look rough they're just the greatest rod I've ever used for smooth surface type of, of welding I just they were great all right um, that's my welding oven um, we'll see how long this light bulb lasts I'm gonna eventually replace it with a big resistor instead uh, but I want to see how long this light bulb lasts and again it's plugged into GFCI it's metal metal fiberglass uh, metal rods inside and a glass light bulb that everyone's been using for a hundred years the old incandescent so um, that's all I used it's like a, a light bulb in a piece of metal that's essentially all I have and it's insulated so I figured I'd share what I did um, I know a lot of other people were talking about if they needed a welding oven I don't know if you do or not but I'm pretty darn happy with it so um, especially when you have parts just laying around that have been sitting there all right enjoy